There are moments in one's life when one feels that one's life has been a lie. This is probably what Star Wars fans are going through right now, as a new report from Jedi News reveals that Disney and Lego have renamed Boba Fett's iconic Star Wars ship. Shocking, right? Here is what we know about it. So what's the new name then? Now to address the elephant in the room. What is the name of the ship now? The ship previously known as Slave One will now simply be known as Boba Fett's Starship. Reports say that Disney called the shots as Lego Star Wars lead designer Michael Lee Stockwell said that they're not calling it Slave One anymore and that it's Boba Fett's Starship. He further revealed that everybody is dropping the Slave One name and it has not been announced publicly, but it's just something that Disney doesn't want to use anymore. This leads us to the second question. Why was this change of name needed anyway? Many people think that this change is due to the live-action television series The Book of Boba Fett that aired on Disney Plus last Christmas. Another reason for the name change that we believe to be true is the connotations associated with the word Slave. Many corporations stopped using the word slave following the Black Lives Matter protest, as we all know the history of African Americans in the United States and the association of the word slave with it. Disney wants to market the Lego Starship to a younger demographic, we all know as the woke generation, and they're going to raise issues with the name and the franchise not putting enough thought into the background of its name. Also, they most probably are not thinking about the adult fans who might create a scene about their emotional attachment to the previous name. A third reason could be that Boba Fett Starship ship as the name will make the ship more recognizable because the Disney Plus series is based on Boba Fett and the name has become a household name. How's the public reacting to this news? Turns out that not everyone is happy with the name change. Well, it was expected given that there's quite an emotional attachment with the name. Actor Mark Anthony Austin, who played Fett in a special edition of A New Hope, tweeted that his ship would always be Slave One. He further said that not even Disney could change that. Do we have an official confirmation? There's been no confirmation about the official name change both from Disney and Star Wars. We're waiting for any official comment to come in, but the Boba Fett fan club has been formulating a list of products that have the name of the starship changed. In the online Star Wars databank, Slave One still exists and is listed and described as the powerful, unique ship owned by Jango Fett and inherited by his clone or son, Boba Fett. While we're on the news, let's explore the history of this iconic ship and who Boba Fett is. Fans first saw the Firespray 31-class ship in The Empire Strikes Back and most recently was seen in the second season of The Mandalorian. Fett, as we all know, was one of the galaxy's most feared bounty hunters in the days of the Empire, and the modified rotating ship was infamous among fugitives. The Slave One originally belonged to Jango Fett, who was Boba's father figure, or let's say DNA donor. Boba was a clone of Jango, but had a special place in his heart that made him treat him like a son. Jango was brutally murdered in front of Boba, and he inherited the ship after that. Fett is one of those few characters that only have a few minutes of screen time, but ended up becoming fan favorites. Fett only appeared for a few minutes in the original trilogy, but became a beloved Star Wars anti-hero. After that, we saw more of his origins and life after the death of Jango Fett in The Clone Wars, and saw his shocking resurrection in The Mandalorian. People liked him because he reminded them of anti-heroes like Tony Montana, portrayed by Al Pacino from Scarface, or Walter White, played by Bryson Cranston from Breaking Bad. Also on changing names, in case you didn't know, this is not the first time Disney has changed major names. The decision of changing the name is huge, but this is not the first time when the franchise decided to change names because of problematic reasons. Remember the time when Leia Organa's Slave Leia costume from Return of the Jedi was removed from merchandise after fans called it out because of it being sexist and objectifying? Comic artist J. Scott Campbell took to social media saying that the bikini and change outfit from the Return of the Jedi is not going to be used by Disney in any of its future products. Disney also flagged older cartoons that it said had racist connotation from children's profiles on its Disney Plus service. Movies that were hidden included Dumbo, Peter Pan, and Swiss Family Robinson. In our childhood favorite Dumbo, crows that help Dumbo learn to fly have exaggerated black stereotypical voices. Similarly, in Peter Pan, Native American characters are caricatured. In The Jungle Book, King Louie is accused of showing a stereotype of African Americans. So there are many examples and Disney is actively working to highlight all that. There are a lot of companies following this example. The company that looks after Dr. Seuss's book said it would stop publishing the ones that were called out for being racially problematic, and Hasbro would also stop branding its potato toys as Mr. Potato Head to acknowledge same gender and single parent variations. Meanwhile, Disney is not taking a break as it has also been holding monthly meetings with advocates from women and minority groups who browse through hundreds of hours of Disney streamed content looking for potentially offensive material to flag on its Disney Plus service. That is how much Disney cares about the content it's feeding to its audience. We 
salute a woke streaming service. A report by The Hollywood Reporter suggests that the monthly Zoom meetings are held between Disney officials and a so-called third-party advisory council. The council includes representatives from the African American Film Critics Association, CAPE, Define American, the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media, Gay Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, Hollywood Health and Society, Illuminative, National Association of Latino Independent Producers, Respectability, the Science and Entertainment Exchange, and Tannenbaum. Disney asks representatives of the organizations to watch content on its streaming service to keep a check for parts that may be tone deaf, racist, or culturally insensitive. Imagine your job description includes watching Disney. However, this isn't as easy as it sounds. The team members are tasked with filtering the existing content from any connotations that may offend any particular group, and this is a huge responsibility in itself, if you see it that way. As for the warnings on its Disney Plus service, the company said that those stereotypes were wrong then and they're wrong now, and they could also have removed the content without highlighting it, but they wanted everyone to know its negative effects, learn from it, and start a conversation to create a more inclusive future together. The warning leads users to their Stories Matter website to learn more about how stories have impacted society. Speaking of Stories Matter, last fall, Disney launched Stories Matter to focus on telling stories from a diverse perspective while acknowledging past grievances in cinema. Disney further said that they're committed to creating stories with inspirational themes that show the rich diversity of the population all over the world. When Disney Plus was launched in 2019, the company put an advisory on a number of titles saying may contain outdated cultural depictions. So, if you consider these efforts that Disney has made over the years for creating mutually inclusive content, you won't be offended at all by the way Disney and Lego changed the name of the ship. You cannot strip Cinderella's story from scratch and say that dreaming of marrying a person you only knew from a single dance is so 1800s, but the franchise is at least making an effort to modify the content as much as it can for the new minds. Businesses are changing with time, and it's about time that fans see this too. Now, let's come back to Boba Fett's show and new merchandise. As for the new Boba Fett streaming show, it will be set within the timeline of The Mandalorian, and star Tamara Morrison as the titular bounty hunter, along with Ming-Na Wen as Fennec Shand, according to StarWars.com. The new merchandise, which is a 478-piece set priced at £34.99, equivalent to $39.99 and €39.99, was released in August last year that featured the new name and minifigures of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian. This merchandise is created for ages 9 and up. The set lets you build the starship with rotating wings, a compartment for a carbonite slab for you bounties, and a transporter vehicle. And that's a wrap for this video. So what do you think about Disney changing the name of this iconic ship? Do you like the new name or the old one was fine? Do let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button for more videos like this. See you in the next one.